What's up guys, Matt, Legacy 4x4, working on the Sprint Car Rock Crawler because I'm addicted to working on it. This time we're gonna mount that rear axle completely into the chassis, that way uh, we don't have to worry about it, we can throw the engine in next. Okay, it's probably pretty obvious that the uh, rear axle or lower links as well as drive shaft are already in place. And that's because I just wanted to locate the rear axle before we do the uppers, which will be the more complicated section, as well as the air shock mounts, which will also be a little more complicated. As you can see, rear axle has some extra skins and gussets on it as well. That's because I threw those in there before throwing it on the truck. Nothing really special there, just some quarter inch gussets that run along the truss that's already on the axle. The first thing we're gonna do is work on the air shock mounts just because I wanna build the basket for it that's gonna to attach to the chassis. Once the air shocks are mounted, we're gonna work on the upper link mount. Those upper link mounts are gonna to have to run to some like inch overhang gussets off the chassis since the chassis is so narrow. So that's why we're saving that for last. We're gonna go ahead and knock the rest of it out first. Okay, so speaking of that suspension basket where the upper shocks are gonna mount at full droop, obviously they can't come this far. That's a kind of an absurd angle. They are gonna have a little bit of a rake to it, but nothing crazy, probably about right here. But that being said, we are going to build a basket off the chassis itself. The sprint car had these little hangers off the edge that you can run a bolt through if you wanted to bolt something in. But we're gonna go ahead and grind these clean and use these as a sleeve to weld another piece of tube to. So we've got a piece of tube right here, just a test piece of tube. Using it as a sleeve, you can kind of see how that overhang is going to look. We're going to do one on this side, one on that side, tee them together, and then build some triangle gussets as well in order to support the air shock mount itself. And then on top of this, as well as on top of this layer, we're going to build some baskets for storage and whatever else we need to store for the uh, buggy itself. So I'm going to get to cleaning these up and uh, measuring this tube out, and then we'll get to uh, welding it in. And hopefully we'll have some air shock mounts pretty quick. Okay, so in order to make these air shock towers off the back basket area right here, I'm gonna actually be using uh, some tractor supply store trailer hitch drop mounts. These are really just like 3 8 thick, super, super thick, very nicely bent with a lot of adjustment holes in it for uh, you know whatever trailer hitch you're mounting or trailer hitch mount you're creating. In any case, they're gonna work perfect for adjustable air shock hoops. All right guys, so we have the shock hoops mounted in. We also have a gusset right here. You probably can't tell, have the angle find around it to make sure it's nice and even. We got a gusset tacked in, but since all of this, like all of this basket area is kind of at my perfect head height um, without the air shocks in it, I'm gonna go ahead and build the rest of the basket, kind of do some gussets on the frame, build the runners and maybe even the vertical pieces as well. So I'm gonna build that out and then we'll put the air shocks in and then we'll work on upper links. So, uh, I'm just gonna start knocking it out. I'll leave the camera rolling and we'll see where we get.
Okay, so we have everything sitting on its own weight. Air shocks are in. The air shocks are strapped down since there's no weight in the front or axle in the front or engine transmission, obviously. So we're strapping those down just to achieve ride height. And here's how everything looks. As you can see, we ran six new gusses as well as those shock towers. So that's how that basket turns out. We're not gonna do anything on the sides of the basket yet. We're gonna plasma cut out some designs for that using some sheet metal when we get to skinning this thing. But for right now, we're gonna leave the basket as is completely empty because we don't know what's gonna be in there. And the next step is gonna be getting the upper links mounted on the axle. The first step to mounting those upper links is gonna be removing these old mounts and angling them directly towards where our new mounts are going to theoretically be. So I'm gonna get the plasma cutter out, plasma cut these old mounts off, get it ground down nice and flush, and we'll start working on the new link mounts. So now that I wire wheeled and cut this old mount apart, I'm actually gonna leave these old mounts since there's like eight layers of weld holding them to the thing. And I'm just gonna weld um, plates on top of it to raise the upper links as well as space them out to the proper angle. So that's what I'm gonna do. These are gonna stay, we're gonna weld in some new link controllers. I do have this marked every inch from the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and put in two gussets and get them measured up, tacked in place, and then we can test time joint direction and uh, figure the rest out from there. So kind of a trial by error. Yep, I'm really happy with those. Those are lining up great. That hole is plenty high. That way I'm not worried about the heim joints or the tube running into anything on its articulation cycle. So I'm gonna go ahead and cardboard out the uh, outside edges of this one as well as weld these in fully. That way we can have a nice complete upper link set and then we'll go ahead and put a ceiling on top of these and uh, kind of clean it up a little bit to hide some of the uh, remaining welds. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's, uh, let's get to it. Okay, so I know that was a long pause. It's actually a completely new day. I was waiting on some um, Barnes four-wheel drive hangers to come in because that's what I made the right side hanger out of. And I also finished the uh, mounts for now before we do the final touches. As we can see, that upper hanger is complete. I'm gonna walk you guys through it on the driver's side, but for now, that upper hanger is complete on the passenger side. I did a little test run, make sure everything was gonna line up and uh, already pre-cut all my metal, so it should be nice and quick, but that's it in place. We utilized some Barnes four-wheel drive hangers, did some quarter-inch plate onto the original tube work, as well as some quarter-inch gussets, so it should be nice and sturdy for some upper links on this uh, like 1,500-pound rig, so I'm happy with it. Go figure, it's uh, not that much sheet metal to make that upper mount, there it is on the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start a time lapse and uh, let's go ahead and get this other side completely mounted and then I'll walk through my four link time joint link creation process as well. Okay, let's talk link tubes. This is a piece of DOM. This is 120 wall DOM since it's the uppers, the lowers are quarter inch. Um, but let's talk putting the heim joints on this. So this is the proper length. I've already cut it to the proper length because I've done the other one already. So I cut these to the same length. Second thing is we're gonna put the heim joint inserts into each end and weld it. The first thing we're gonna do with this piece of DOM is drill two holes in each end. That way we can put some plug welds into the sleeve of the uh, heim joint. So we're gonna do that with the drill press and then uh, we'll get to welding the heim joint sleeves in and uh, get to installing it. Should be quick. Okay, so let's talk heim joints. These are actually legacy 4x4 heim joints. Jake and I uh, 
design and how to manufacture, create some high joints for us. They're a uh, three piece design, so that's what we went with instead of the injection mold it. But I digress, I'm not here to give you an ad spiel on uh, our high joints that we got uh, manufactured. Anyways, Legacy 4x4 Heim joints, we're gonna put them into this piece of DOM and then uh, install it on the Samurai. Um, if you are interested though, they sell on Amazon, so besides the point though. Um, it comes with an insert, Heim joint, and a lock nut. This is a left-hand thread, so it's reverse thread from standard. And what I'm gonna do, when I put the insert into the tube, I'm gonna spin it all the way until the threads are on the full length of the insert. That way, when I weld with the Heim joint in it, I can unthread and thread to make sure all the threads aren't binding, and I'm good to go. The plug weld holes are also into the tube itself. So once we slide, so once we slide the Heim joint all the way in to where we want it, we're gonna go ahead and weld the plug welds first. That way the sleeve stays nice and tight. Once the plug welds are welded, we'll weld the top ring and we'll be good to go. After it's fully welded, we are gonna slather it with anti-seize, spin them back together, paint it, and then uh, get it installed. And anti-seize, don't forget it because you'll end up like me. And you'll have like 16 Heim joints that you had to cut the DOM off because uh, they're completely seized together. So anti-seize, don't forget it. Okay, Sprint car four link rear is uh, complete. That's how it looks from the side. Here's how the other side barns mount welded in. That is 75% of the total length of the lower. That is the length of the upper. Um, I said that kind of weird. The upper is within those 75% parameters for uh, length length. So the pinion angle shouldn't change that much throughout its cycle. But uh, once we get the front axle and engine in, we'll test it to make sure there's no uh, weird play going on there. But for now, we're gonna call it good. You probably can't see because it's black, but I did weld on some quarter inch end caps to the back of those upper mounts as well as some beveled upper top caps there to give it a little bit of uh, structure on the top and I did go ahead and spray that as it was uh, piping hot so the spray is bubbling up but I promise the welds are good so that's the uh, upper link on the axle side as well I'm pretty stoked with this got kind of a mean character to it the only other thing we got to do now is uh, do the engine transmission front axle wiring seats and uh, everything else that's involved with building these things so looking forward to the next video probably going to be the front engine install but yeah, guys, that's it for that one. Four link on the rear. The rear is completely done. Happy with that. And uh, let's move on to the front next. See you guys next week.